Hi students, uh, we were discussing about the CVP analysis or the break-even point in the previous lectures, the same topic we will continue and now we will discuss here some of the graphical presentation and even uh, through the tabular method that through the table how it is calculated the break-even point, uh, what is the graphical presentation for that and how all the calculations are done. Uh, the same example, the same basic information that we have a sale price that is a $15 per unit that the currently the price of the product is $15 and the variable cost what they are expecting is how much that is the $10 and the fixed cost for that specific period is how much that is the $5,000. So this is the basic information even in the previous lectures we have to use the same information. Now here we have some of the calculations specifically by using the tables that how it is that okay, we just start that these are obviously the assumed values that the company is not producing any unit means the total number of units they are producing and selling is zero so what will be the variable cost because the variable cost is changing with the level of the activity it means if there is no unit produced the variable cost again will be zero but the fixed cost the fixed cost obviously we have said that it is not related to the unit or the activity it is related to the period so that is how much that is 5000 even at zero units mean even at no production level still the fixed cost will be 5000 so the variable cost is zero fixed cost is 5000 so it means the total cost the total cost obviously is the combination of these two the variable cost and the fixed cost so it will obviously be 5000 and the total revenue revenue because we are selling one unit for 15 dollar and here we are not producing any unit we are not selling any unit because the number of units we have assumed is the zero it means it again will be zero so what will be the profit or loss so total cost and the total revenue we have to compare so the total revenue minus the total cost so this is the total revenue so here they are not getting even a one dollar the zero revenue is there but still the cost is five thousand due to its nature so the loss is five thousand dollar so it means they are not getting any profit, they are getting a loss of $5,000 because they are not unit selling any unit, they are not producing any unit. So that's why only the fixed cost they have and there is no revenue, so all the fixed cost is what it is the loss for them. So it is a bracket or the loss. We just assume some other value, let's say for example they are producing and selling 100 units. Now. 100 units the variable cost for one unit it is how much it is ten dollar so for 100 unit multiplied by 10 so it will be 1000 now the fixed cost again we know the fixed cost is 5000 it is not changing with the level of activity these are the things we have to consider now the total cost 1000 plus 5000 so obviously it will be 6,000 and the total revenue now they are selling how many units they are selling 100 units and the price for one unit is 15 so it means the total revenue they will get is 1,500 and if we get the profit or loss so revenue is less still and the cost is more so they have a loss but loss is how much now only 4,500 dollars if we see here the loss was five thousand dollar now it is four thousand five hundred dollars now we just assume for example one thousand units so for one thousand units the variable cost one thousand into ten obviously it will be ten thousand okay. now the fixed cost is same there is no change with the level of the activity so 10 plus 5, so it will be 15,000. So the total cost is 15,000, which includes the fixed cost and the 
variable cost. Now the total revenue because they are selling 1000 unit and one unit is selling for how much for $15. So the revenue they are getting is 15,000. So what is the position here? They have a revenue of 15,000. They have a cost of 15,000. It means it is zero, no profit, no loss. So I hope you remember the concept of the break even point when there is a no profit, no last situation so even in the previous calculations when we have calculated so the answer was 1000 now the next thing that we have <clears throat> we just assume for example they are selling 2000 units now the variable cost 2000 into 10 <clears throat> 20000 and the fixed cost obviously there is no change in that 5,000 so it will be 25,000 now the revenue revenue will be 30,000 because 2,000 into 15 so it will be 30,000 so now revenue is 30,000 the cost is 25,000 it means they are getting a profit of how much 5,000 if you see here in the first two instances they have a loss here it is break even no profit no loss and above 1000 even if we calculate for 1100 one unit only still there will be a profit of how much that will be calculated so now in this area this is what this is for the profit so the loss break even and then the profit so what we get from that means first of all the fixed cost is not changing with less unit, with more unit, even on zero unit, the cost will be there. But it's changing the variable cost with every unit, it is changing the total cost, obviously, because it is the combination of the fixed cost and the variable cost, it is also changing, it is increasing with the more units are produced. Again, the revenue is also increasing with the no, 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 more number are produced and sold. So the profit or the loss, when there's more sales, obviously there will be more profit but we have to achieve a certain level that is the break even point to get the revenue and the sales that is sales the revenue and the cost the total cost should be equal where the total cost and the total revenue is equal that is the point of the break even and above that point just assume that we calculate here for uh, 1001 unit so the total cost will be 10,000 and 10, 5,000, 15,000 and 10 and the total revenue will be, uh, sorry it is 15,000 and 10 and this will be uh, 15,000 and 15 and the profit will be 5 dollar and I hope you remember the contribution margin. So if we calculate that was five dollar and if you see just with the change of one unit from 1000 unit to 1001 unit so from the break even point above one unit there is a change of five dollar in the profit so that's the contribution margin this is the purpose of the contribution margin with one extra unit the company profit is increasing by five dollars so this is the concept of contribution margin now, if we look at the graphical things, <clears throat> on the x-axis, we have a number of the units. Obviously, we have a 0, then 100, 1000, 2000, 3000. So, on this level, we have a units and here we have a cost and revenue. So, both cost and revenue are on the y-axis. Now, if we just make a simple graph, so the we start with what? with the variable cost or we start with the fixed cost. The fixed cost obviously is the 5000 and it is not changing with the number of the unit. So we just say that let's assume this is the fixed cost. So the fixed cost is parallel to x axis because for zero unit, for 100 unit, for 1000 unit, for even 4000 unit, for 2000 units for all the units the fixed cost is not changing so it is going parallel to 
x axis. Now the variable cost, the variable cost is starting from 0 and obviously it is gradually increasing. So it will not start from here. It will start from this is the value which was the 5000 here. So it will start from here from the 0 and it will go like this. So this is what this is the variable cost. So variable cost was zero when there was no unit produced, but the fixed cost was even 5,000 when even the zero units were produced, but the variable cost increasing and going to the higher levels. Now, the next thing is what is the total cost, which is the combination of both fixed cost and the variable cost. So it is starting from where? From 5,000 and obviously with every unit is increasing by how much? By $10. So we will start the variable cost from here so it will go parallel to this one. So it will be the total cost. So we have a fixed cost, we have a variable cost and we have a total cost. Now the next thing that we have is the concept of the total revenue. Again, it is starting from zero. Obviously it is starting from zero and gradually with the each number of units they are producing and selling, there's a contribution margin of $5. So it will be increasing, the revenue will be increasing with the $15. So it means there's a revenue increasing and this will be the total revenue. So now this is the point. If we see here, the total revenue and the total cost both are equal at that point. So it means the revenue here, if we just make a simple line here, so it is how much? It is 1000 unit means this is what this is the break even point. So at 1000 units, when the total sales or the total revenue is how much? That is 15,000. So that is 5 and 15 here. Obviously, the, there's a no profit, no loss, the break even point, or what we say the equal, the total revenue and total cost is equal. But if we look at that point, it means this area, the red area, here the revenue is less as compared to the cost. So it means this is the loss area as we have already seen here in the tabular form. And above that, because here now the line is crossing, it is intersecting and going above that total cost. It means this area is what right, this area is the profit area so this above 1000 unit this is the profit area and below 1000 this is the loss area and exactly at 1000 unit that is why that is the break even point so this is how we are calculating the break even point we have a cost we have a total revenue we have a total uh, sorry, variable cost, we have a fixed cost and then we are comparing that how it is moving, it is increasing uh, with that level, the number of units, the cost is increasing, the revenue is increasing. At one point, they are intersecting the total cost and the total revenue. So that is the break even point. Okay. So still, if you have any doubt, if you have any question related to that, so you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you very much.